Welcome to the RPG Maker MV Tutorial Series Level 2. This is the first and the final installment of the series, where we look at everything we've managed to achieve so far over the full 20 episodes. Let's make a game! So we started our journey by making a map. We looked at how to make dungeon maps and to populate those with interesting things. We playtested our maps and looked at how to improve our playtesting and we set up a start scene. This was our new game. We can start off our game. We have an introduction. It's got some amazing text. Whoever wrote it is clearly a genius. We have the ability to input our own name. And you can call it anything you like, something really imaginative like cool. Spent a lot of time on that one. Our hero can be male or female. And you can see that the icon will change depending on whether we're male or female. We can have a full party of adventurers and we can travel the world going from the village to the forest, from the forest across a lovely bridge and a stream into our brand new town. In the town we can do amazing stuff. And we can go from there into the deep dark lost forest. From the deep dark lost forest we can go all the way through and across the other side of the world into some creepy old tower. From the creepy tower we can get to a dungeon. From the dungeon we can teleport to an amazing ending scene. You wouldn't believe how good it is. Here's the scene. Uh, once again a lot of thoughts gone into this. You've saved me. Fantastic. Our hero and allies freed the fairy queen and restored peace sure that uh, no one could do any better. We've got credits. We worked on theme music and improving the liveliness of our maps by adding some villager NPCs and some houses and shops. In our village we can now go to the inn. At the inn we can talk to Granny and we can stay for the night. We can go to a shop and we can buy things. To buy things we need to have something to buy, so we created some items. We also looked at making weapons and armor for your characters. We had amazingly creative things like cloth armor and leather armor. We imported a database that allowed us to just not really think about the creation of these things, uh, but it gave us a nice little starting point with short swords, leather armor, potions, hand axes and spears among other things. And then we moved on to characters and classes, magic and skills. We saw that we now have the ability to do some pretty amazing stuff like blowing things up or things like freezing them. Once again, a lot of creative effort gone into these spells. <laughs> There's this thing called windmill. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but uh, it certainly works. There's a character generator that we can use to make our own custom characters, including player characters and uh, NPCs. So here we are, we've uh, looked at how to just press one button and get our own sort of versions of different NPCs that we can put into the village. And here is some faces that we've made for our own custom player characters. We can have them happy, angry, sad, and you can use those in conversations. We also looked at how to change your character depending on whether or not you have armor and what kind of armor that you have. We then took a deep dive into Monsters and Treasure where we looked at how to set up treasure boxes with a little bit more customization and how to customize your drops that you get from monsters that you fight. The all important quests with simple and connected quests where you can just do one basic thing like for example harvesting some carrots. More creative genius in play there. When you harvest the carrots she give you some money. That's amazing. And after you've harvested the carrots you can then activate the next quest in the series which involves catching a slime What's all this about? That's a weird kind of quest, if ever I've heard one. Who's this? Patting slimy. Glub, glub, 
wiping the goo off your hands. Oh dear. We then moved on to the dungeon generator. Using this dungeon generator, what we can do is we can do something sadly surprising like generate a dungeon. Uh, don't do this was the moral of that part of the episode. Your players will probably hate you for it. You can do something like this, where you make a lovely little room and then you can actually customize it so that it no longer looks like a square blocky dungeon. You probably didn't re need the dungeon generator in the first place, but it just kind of helps you to get started. And after you've customized and customized, you can come out with something that looks more like this. You can then go on to put traps and puzzles into your dungeon. The door's locked. Maybe there's a way to open around here somewhere. Don't tell anyone, but you can move that boulder and there's a secret passage behind there. You can flip a switch, fight some enemies along the way, and now you can get through that door and go on to the next part of the puzzle slash dungeon where just before you do anything else, you make sure you save because who knows, you might get killed. But luckily, we've fixed RPG Maker. So now, instead of dying, you can go on to do the final boss. Uh, we have four bosses set up, pretty much. We've got a stone boss. He's a Garuda. Whatever that is. We've got the standard dragon in the lava level. He'll fight you. We've got a weird kind of robot -y thing. Doesn't really match the vibe, but that's okay. We've got a demon in a cursed level. He looks pretty bad. And that all takes us through to the end of our game. Which, of course, we did already cover off in the end scene. And all of that brings us back to the beginning. So that's what we can achieve in 15 minutes. Uh, give plus or minus five hours-ish. Uh, at the end of it, you can have a full, relatively playable game that goes from start to finish uh, and, um, and has your own personal touches. And so that brings us to the end of the making of our level 2 tutorials, which means it's your turn to start the making of your dream game with level 2, episode 1. On the other hand, if you've finished level 2, we look forward to seeing you again in level 3, where we'll work on customizing our maps and our game, making it playable on mobile, and showing you how you can sell your game for free. Thanks for being here for the journey, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Let's make a game! That's the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please consider smashing those like and subscribe buttons as they do help with the algorithm. Now it's your turn to go make a game. See you in the next one!